today, I'm going to talk about Raiders of the Lost Ark. This movie is really damn good, and I really fucking appreciate like what they managed to do with this film, and how they managed to like, capture a great fucking story, and just like acting, and just everything about it is like so fucking good. There's plenty of movies, you know, that are classics, and you know, air quotes classics, and people would go on and on about like, you know, you had to watch it, it's so good. And you watch it, it's like, it's not as good as people like claiming this. Still like it, but it's not like, it's not the same punch it would have if you like never heard of it before and just found it on your own. But maybe we're like, you know, like, watch it like, first time or a thousand times, knowing like what happens going into it. And so go like, that's a damn good movie. And this is one of them. Okay, so right off the bat. Okay, so that brings us to maybe in question Raiders. All right, so like issues with it, sure. Wrongs it to the point where it's completely irredeemable or like completely like unwatchable as a movie. There's like some small nitpicks I have with it, you know, first going into it before talking about the really good, like really amazing shit about it. So um, let's just jump into it, you know, fuck it, why not? I guess it's just like, first off, it's like hard for me to, uh, it's hard for me to put this over Doom or Crusade. It's easy to see why so many do. I personally think they're both like equally just as good as this one, you know? Anyways, back to the issue. Okay, so first up, the movie felt like it could have ended for Marion and Indy are on Cap Katanaga's ship. They have the Ark, or the Armor Island, and the whole face melting, like, oh, I'm kind of face melting, oh my god, I'm fucking dying, chill out now. It's like cool, like fucking light show, whatever. You don't need the whole, the Nazis going on to Captain Katanaga's ship. Then they fucking go, oh, we're gonna take the Ark, and he like stows onto the sub to the fucking like Nazi sub base. Then, like, cut to the island. Just like, you know, go, the Nazis still have the Ark. Indy loses track of them, like, during the car chase sequence from earlier. And then, you know, have Marion and Indy track them down to the island. That whole sub sequence seems like kind of necessary. It's like there for reasons, I guess. It doesn't really add much to the story. Okay, so I guess we should make a correction. I should have said that Marion was hiding in one of the fucking basket things and then she got carried off into the car but through the confusion of like her being carried to the crowd she must have been, been switched from the different basket that's like mentioned in the offhanded comment by Indy later on in the movie when he sees her again so still like I mean kind of convenient but you get the idea <laughs> Switch baskets. But anyways, from there, I have my second point. How did Indy lose track of the truck Marion was in? There's only one there while they took away Marion and, you know, driving off. So where did it go? Indy, like, looks away, looks back, shoots at the truck, and then it explodes. And she just shows up again, like, and she's fine. You know, you know, no scars or burns. I mean, like, so there had to have been two trucks. But it clearly shows to establish that there's only like one truck there. Just the truck that Marion was in. So like where was the second one? What what happened to it? Like I mean what where'd it go? Fucking like it's just I don't know where out. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Like I mean like you know We can help each other out now. I need one of the pieces your father collected. A bronze piece about this size with a hole in it off center with a crystal. You know the one I need? Yeah. I know it. <laughs> Anyways, moving on from there, this is my weakest point, but still, like, I, it still feels kind of, kind of convenient, honestly, that Ravenwood's daughter, Marion, will, like, have the sad headpiece of Raw, like, um, he just gave it to her, I guess, or she found it, I mean, she, she just has it, like, it's kind of convenient, it's just like, oh, it's there, and, like, you know, I need to find the stuff of Raw, uh, my, uh, friend, you know, like, had a daughter, I'm sure she might have it, and she does. And it's like, okay, that's convenient, that's easy. 
Anyways, I know this is just because Tip of Doom is a sequel, but Indy claims to Marcus that he doesn't believe in magic. Pocus Pocus bullshit. But in Tip of Doom, which happened a year before this, in 30 in 35, he runs into a fucking like cult where the guy like tears people's hearts out and controls them as like slaves. So like that's magic. So how can he fucking claim magic doesn't exist? Yet still that happened. It doesn't make all sense to me, you know, like I mean like magic exists clearly because like that could have happened otherwise, it's not magic. But you claim it doesn't exist, so it's like I, I don't know, it's just confusing a little bit. Parts of the blue screens are kind of like a little obvious. The one scene where like Indy and Sahala are like digging up the tomb with like the snakes in it. And the next scene, like at the end, where like Indy's like, don't look to the light, close your eyes, Marion. Shut your eyes, Mary, and don't look at it, no matter what happens. That looks a little awkward, looking back at it. Kind of wish my character just got, like, some more expansion on, like, the character. Like, you know, like, Marcus comes back, but I don't remember, like, if uh, Sala did or not. And, like, I thought he's, like, a pretty good, interesting character. He just kind of, like, leaves the movie after, after like, Indy and Marion get to the boat, so, you know. Then there's, like, Jock, which I kind of like, thought was a funny character. He could, like, make another cameo later on or some shit, like, I don't know. Then there's the whole... Indiana Jones as like a teacher. It's like seeing like what James Bond does after like he's done like you know his shit. Like I don't really care why I'm seeing this. I mean, it's like where he's gonna go next in his next like uh, adventure or whatever. But I don't really care. It's like just move on to the adventure, you know? Like, fuck it. Now, the fun part. Okay, so, right off the bat, it starts off with a staple for the first movies. So this one is set in the jungle area, where we follow dudes getting lost as they travel through the jungle. This all leads to the reveal of Indy himself, like, holy shit, dude, cool. And it's like fucking Harrison Ford, holy Okay, that's pretty straightforward there. Do we have any, um, we have another? Okay, we have uh, someone right over here. Yes. Uh... Are you hungry? <laughs> Are you hungry? No, not really. Anyways, <laughs> we follow some people being guided as Indy shows his skills getting through the traps that lead to the treasure. Where he does his uh, classic bit, avoiding the pressure of tiles for the arrows, taking the sandbag out, and swiftly replaces the treasure with the sandbag. From there, everything crumbles, Indy runs past the darts, both Indy and Satipo run up to the pit. Satipo goes first, leaving Indy behind. He barely gets over the pit, sliding under a stone door, running into an impaled Satipo. Indy takes the treasure back, just then the boulder rolls, nearly crushing Indy. The mad lad fucking jumps, tumbles, the main baddie, Belloc, with a tricked tribe surrounding Indy. He hands over his gun and treasure. Belloc and Indy do some banter, you know, villain hero stuff, whatever. Indy breaks for it, running to the plane, yelling at Jock to start it, tribe shooting at him with arrows, falling close behind. Indy jumps and snakes slithers on Indy as they fly away, then end scene. What can they say about this fucking moment that uh, hasn't been said already? It's like just immediately iconic and fucking like really sets up the whole moon. The whole mood and the whole like tone of the entire film perfectly. It's exciting, it's fast paced, it's fucking fun as hell. It like really establishes the whole entire like how the story's gonna go, what it's about, um, setting up the villain, the hero, where their status are, like how they handle situations. Uh, first stop, Belloc. <laughs> He's straight up like a fucking stone cold asshole who like goes along with whoever he has to, you know, to like, end point basically. How later on he joins like the Nazis, where these guys fucking like, you know, find the Lost Ark and shit. Only for his own self interest basically. That's how he does like here in the opening with Tribe, basically like foreshadowing how he's gonna be like portrayed later on in the movie. Then there's like Indy. <laughs> skilled, how he's like uh, rough around the edges, 
how he gets like through like, tight spots constantly, who he works with, uh, how he's an uh, archaeologist finding treasure to like put it away in museums. That's all perfectly well-rounded and established in this opening sequence. Only taking like fucking like up at most like eight minutes. And it's like just the best fucking eight minutes you could imagine. It's really good. Anyways, maybe past that. You go on to the rest of the story. I actually like want to like really hold in like why the opening like is so perfect for this movie and how it like works really well. But moving on from there. Oh no! Uh, there's a story I'm gonna sum up, like, sum up like real quick because like everyone's seen the movie, they know what it's about. I mean, come on, like fucking like you know, and he looks for the arc, goes around, travels from place to locale to locale. You know, Marine comes along, bad guys, Nazis, face no, you get that yeah. So uh, right off the bat, gotta start at the beginning of course, where Andy's like doing a lecture, like teaching shit or whatever. Marcus comes in. It's all like, hey, Andy, some gov guys, some government guys, you know, like, I need help finding, like, Lost Ark. Andy's like, aw, oh, bullshit. But he goes along anyways, because, like, fuck it. Uh, he runs into Marion, going all like, hey, Marion, you got that, um, fucking, like, headpiece of raw for me, dude. And she's like, uh, not today, but I will tomorrow. Like, you know, wink, wink, no judge. Uh, he does some, like, past history or whatever. You get the idea. Anyways. <laughs> Same thing your friend Dr. Jones wanted. Surely he told you there would be others. Time is past. You don't need that. Uh, uh, wait. Uh. I'm sorry. Daddy. Don't call me. Daddy. Call me by my new name. Three face. This is my three sided die. One, you live. Two, you die. Three, we drink our chocolate together. To hot. Comes fucking like. Marching in like a stone cold fucking badass. It's all like, hey, Marion, in the fucking treasure. It's like, uh, Eddie comes in, there's a big bar fight. Her uh, whole place fucking like blows up in like beautiful explosions of fire. And like, it cuts like fucking um, Marion and Indy traveling on into Cairo uh, to run into uh, Salah. Plus, find out like how. Balak and the Nazis are digging for the Ark. From there, they Marion and Indy get a monkey, fight some goons, kick a kick ass, you know, fight scene. Indy guns down a swordsman. It's fucking great. Uh, Marion is bleed dead because Indy like shoots out a truck and like you know it explodes. Runs into Balak. Evil dude is all like, uh, I'm a fucking asshole. Let me go. I'm gonna you know, like you know pose your date because I'm a dick. Balak and Indy heads out to the dig site undercover. And he finds where the place the staff is, tracks that down to where the uh, next clue is, which is like this huge pit. But before that, Indiana Jones runs into Marion and they're like, Marion, you're fucking alive. But like, he has to leave her there so they don't like, you know, go suspicious. So you can like, oh, Indiana Jones is here. You gotta stop our uh, Nazi shit to kill the guy. So Indiana Jones goes to this fucking like next place. It's all like tomb. Underground, like snakes and everything. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Asps. Very dangerous. You go first. Uh, you get like trapped and dropped Marion down there too, alongside Indiana Jones. They both bust out. Indiana Jones has fucking like amazing bug sequence, you know, the car chase, the iconic bug. Okay. So before that point, we get to the fucking like plane fight scene with a big buff Nazi guy. Then we get to the fucking like best part of the movie, practically kind of, depending on, depending on who you ask, I guess. But like fucking a, a huge chase sequence. Indiana Jones, you know, touching up. He goes onto the, the back truck, you know, almost like falls off, goes under the truck, around the side, kicks the guy's ass, fucking like drives the truck. Got next guy comes in, shoots him in the arm. Uh, much like it's fucking like flying off the fucking track down the cliff. Indiana Jones catches like the big bad guy. He bumps into him, you know, completely fucking like side roading him. And then, like, you know, driving through the town, managing to evade Balak and like the rest of the bad dudes to haunt and a Nazi guy, whatever. And, like, you know, 
jetted Captain Katsunaga's ship alongside Marion. So Andy and Marion. Anyway, so Andy and so Andy and Marion are chilling on this ship, you know, so like having a good time. Booking one. Boom! Nazi, show the fuck up. Yeah, that's my arc, damn it. I'm getting it. Fuck you, bitch. Uh, then, like, you know, bounce. And he's like, oh, fuck no. They took Marion and I'm right. those bastards. Jumps onto the sub, you know, somehow holding his breath, even though, like, they go, like, a hundred miles or so, like, to the secluded island. How does he do that? Like, is he have, like, fucking super breath? Is he, like, fucking Superman? Is, like, he goes, he sinks into the sub. Are they always like above water the entire time before they get to the island? I just now I'm poor, I'm fucked it. Anyway, so get to the fucking like, aforementioned like Nazi sub, whatever, no one cares. Then boom, pulls up music and goes like, hey, I'll fucking marry you back, you damn bastards. Nazi are like, ah ha ha, I won't fucking do that, cause fuck you. You wanna see this art blown up? Come on, I'm Bella, like, I'm an asshole. You, uh, you wanna see this fucking thing up too, right? Your life has been spent in pursuit of archaeological relics. Inside the ark are treasures beyond your wildest admiration. You want to see it open as well as that. In the island, we are simply passing through history. This, this is history. They fucking like tie Indy and bury it up. Indy's like, close your eyes, Marion. They will open the fucking arc. Now the guys are like, oh, this is just fucking sound. And like, boom, face melt. The lights going through the fucking guy's chest. Uh, spirits coming out. Oh my god, it's fucking mass hysteria. Everyone fucking dies. America. We're like, and he's like, those guys are fucking stupid. They're like, oh, I've gotta be taken care of by top men. And he's like, who? And they're like, oh, top men. Married and Indy, like, fuck off. You know, like, has sexually, like, and Marion shits out. Fucking like Shia LaBeouf <laughs> or some shit. Anyways, that's the story. It's fucking like really great. It's an iconic story for the ages, for the fucking like all time, baby. It's it's, it's a beautiful fucking like story of like love and not fighting Nazis and multi faces. It's chef's kiss. Transmitter. It's a radio for speaking to God. And it's within my reach. You want to talk to God? Let's go see him together. I've got nothing better to do. The acting is superb. Harrison Ford, Karen Allen, Paul Freeman, Deho Elliott, Ronald Lacey, John Reese, Reese Davis. You know, like the whole rest of the crew, like the fucking like lighting crew, Spielberg, Lucas, ILM, just all hands on deck. Really amazing fucking film work. It just it's so good. It's so fucking good. Holy shit. Ah, dead. So cool. The next big highlight is the action sequences from the fucking like, opening where the tomb and boulder and you getting chased, the Kairu scene, the, the, the tough Nazi playing fight scene, or the climax heavy car chase, or even the bar fight at Marion's. The choreography, which is about the characters, how each scene builds up to the action's climax of that sequence. Oh, really fucking like. Just excellent use your space and like your choreography and like your seat and like where you are at that point in the movie. And it's like, it's so good. Uh, excuse me. It's so good. I can't think of any glaring issues hurting the movie when it comes to just the sheer enjoyment of the film itself. Like, you know, how the characters are portrayed, how the movie is presented. Like everything, it's just like it's such a fucking well-rounded, excellent goddamn movie. Fuck, uh, so good. In terms of like the pop culture, the influence, uh, the whole revival of like old school adventure movies, um, 
was like fucking like Crocodile Dundee and like uh, Romance in the, Romance in the Stone and Mummy trilogy. It's like I just like the presence and like what it's done for like pop culture and cinema is like undeniable, and it's just good. It's a good fucking movie. I read it like next uh, three sequels after that some other time, and in anticipation for like you know Dial uh, for Destiny, which I'm really, really excited for. Hope it's good. You know, cross your fingers. You know, like please be fucking good. I really like the fucking uh, first four. So you know, here's hoping you know like you know we never know for sure, but please be fucking good. Anyways, uh, like, comment, subscribe. You know, subscribe. Do that fun shit. Bye.